is on eight and a half by eleven paper, large letters in double space, but it's not. Uh, but I grew up in Brothersville. I lived on 11 on 7 Washington Street in the 50s. I uh, remember roller skating on Fair Boulevard before it was open to the public. And uh, it was a little on the rough side, but we uh, got the job done. Now it's Truman, and for those of you who are on. And in the 50s, I went to uh, Brothersville High School, graduated in 1967. Uh, as I grew up a little bit, I got my driver's license at 16 years old and, and uh, made the loop around and around and around the loop. <laughs> Everybody had to do the loop one Saturday night. I got up in the morning, my mother made me eat breakfast every morning. I really wasn't interested because I wanted to get going, but she made me eat breakfast. After breakfast, I took my baseball glove, my ball, and my favorite bat, and I got on my bicycle and maybe went over to the baseball field over at the Brown Shoe Company. Remember that? Yeah. And we'd choose up sides, and we would play at noon, and when the whistle blew, we all went home to lunch. And of course, my mom and dad didn't know where in the world I was, but I had to come home for lunch, so it kind of changed a little bit. I've ridden, like I said, I've ridden my bicycle on every street in this town over and over again. So it is, it's, it's, I don't know, it's almost like going back to the twilight zone. You know, I, I just, I have a few hours with nothing to do, and I'll get in, the, in my truck, and I'll just drive around and around and around town, just real slow looking at things. And it, 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 it just brings back absolutely marvelous, marvelous memories. Brothersville was an absolutely uh, beautiful town to grow up in. I have great memories, and uh, it's, it's wonderful to be back home. Uh, I'd like to extend my sincerest thanks to the Brothersville Area Arts Council for everything that they've done. I mean, these people work hard at what they do. And, uh, this is not the first real exhibit that we've had. You remember we had one at the Armory in 2017? And I want to tell you what, Terry Rushing put all those displays together. He and his crew did a magnificent job on that. I, have, I, I quit my teaching job 51 years ago. And I've made a living as an artist for the last 51 years. I've shown in uh, universities, pretty high dollar big universities. I've shown in art museums, so-called nice art museums. But I never had as nice a display as was at the, uh, at the, the armor. That was first class. And as you can see, this is totally first class as well. I remember one of my favorite things about that show is Dwayne Mickey, my dear, dear friend Dwayne Mickey, uh, didn't know really what we were doing. He just donated money and, and tried to get it done. And I'm standing up by the stage and Dwayne comes in the door and he goes, oh my. That, that, you remember that room was just marvelous. It, it really was first class. So. Terry, thank you so much for what you've done and what you've done here. Uh, this painting weighs 140 pounds. And uh, my concern was, how am I going to support 140 pounds? And it's got a nice piece of angle iron underneath it and so forth. And Terry says, oh, don't worry about it. There's three quarter inch plywood back in that, uh, that drywall up there. And when Terry and I and the helpers were putting it up there, I put the first leg screw through that uh, angle iron and baby did it snug up beautifully. So <laughs> it was sweet. Yeah. I was glad to see that puppy snug up to, to, to the uh, to effort yeah. that it was. But my sincerest thank you also to the group that's done this, all of you, and I do have to say my sincerest thanks to Jana Meredith, for all of her efforts in this cause. That woman has more energy than any one person I've ever met.
show with this painting was not to show every nook and cranny in Corona's death. Not to, you know, you went, well, why was this? Why did you have this? Why didn't you have that? And that sort of thing. My goal here was to um, kind of express a very positive attitude toward the community. Um, basically speaking from the red and white cotton blossoms, to the red and white Brothersville Tigers, this mural is designed to be a cheerleader for the future development of Carruthersville. My wife Sandy, standing over here, my wife Sandy is the former mayor of Washington, Missouri, and her 12-year tenure was extremely successful. They wanted her to run again, for sure. She always said that it was her goal to be a leader of the community by being cheerleader for all those engaged in the process. Please accept my painting as a cheerleading gesture of positive wishes for the future development of my hometown. Blue Hill's always been primarily uh, agriculture, big, big agriculture. Oh, we're coming down. We're going past Portageville, and uh, we're riding along. Sandy says, look, a cotton field. <laughs> look how much cotton there is. It goes forever. And look, over on the other side, there's another cotton. Well, what are those yellow things out there? <laughs> so those are cotton bales. When I was 10 years old, people asked me, did you ever pick cotton down south of the I said, yeah, I picked cotton. And I was about 10, 12 years old. And I had a sack, it was a small sack, but I spent more time jumping around in the uh, cotton wagon than I did picking <laughs> cotton as far as that's concerned. Of course, they told me that was a good thing because it smashed the cotton down and so forth. But uh, yes, I did pick cotton. And of course, I guess back in the early 60s, the uh, cotton picker came along about that time. and. Uh, so I explained, Sandy, those were the bales and so forth, and uh, that, that big green thing up there, it sucks up all that, look that nice cotton field. Now, is that a cotton field or not? I mean, I wanted to paint a cotton field. Yeah, that's cotton field. And uh, they suck up the cotton, and it goes round and round, and it spits it out in the back, which is uh, a far cry from whenever they put them in wagons and carry it on, that sort of thing. Uh, I used the cotton stalk to divide the thought patterns that were that's in the mural. So what you have there is the bud over to the left. You have the bud of the cotton. Then you have the cotton blossom. Then you extend up to the first bowl. Then the opening of the bowl, more opening of the bowl to the uh, final uh, finished mature cotton bowl. And uh, I think that's my favorite part of the mural, is that cotton bowl setting up against that blue sky. Mm -hmm. um, what I, uh, Carruthersville has always been a strong faith-based community. I put the uh, church in the center, and uh, I chose the first Christian church because that's the church I went to, and I grew up in that church, as a matter of fact. And not only that, but it's really the only church in town with a major steeple on it. <laughs> and so I said, and, and, and it sits right there on War Avenue with that beautiful steeple sitting up there, and that's the reason I chose it. Of course, I did go there. You know, I grew up in that church. Uh, oh, we got Great Metal Myrtle. I heard, said, what do you want? We want Great Myrtle. Great Myrtle, Great Myrtle. Can I have Great Myrtle. So we got Great Myrtle in the piece. The Diane Sawyer Recreation Center. And uh, I understand you have a big fundraiser to, to try to keep that water tower in through there. I thought the water tower turned out nice. I, it yeah. very three-dimensional yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I said, okay, then we, uh, once a year you have a parade of flags. Uh, and so naturally we did that. I added the eagle on my arm. Uh, going back to the left side over there, uh, we got a couple of kids catching the best crappie the world has ever known. I tell you, if, you, if you're a fisherman, you know that crappie's a dandy. I've heard that. And I, I loved it because it was three-dimensional. 
really pops out off of the piece. And the kids, look at the look on their face, they, they're really excited about the piece too. Um, jumping down just below the river, obviously, is very, very uh, important to the community. Always has, that's where your community came from, was from the river. All the early explorers in the river, Crothersville probably goes back to the late 1700s a little bit, but of course I know it was founded in 18, 1857, I believe, something like that. Mm -hmm. And of course you got the Reynolds Park. Uh, the high school, brand new high school. It's not the high school I went to. The high school I went to got destroyed the tornado. But uh, there also is a tiger in the gymnasium. And uh, uh, JJ and all of us worked on that. and. Uh, I did an original, it was a three foot by three foot picture of that tiger. And if you ever go in there, walk down to the uh, the free throw line. And if you're there and you're gonna shoot a free throw, you're gonna see two eyeballs, two teeth right below the <laughs> And I did that on purpose. <laughs> uh, we got your band, we're, we're having a good time. I, I tell you what, what was kind of interesting, I said, JJ says, send me some pictures of the, the band uniform, you know. And none of the pictures had the little plume on top. And finally she found one that had the plume on top. I said, I gotta have that plume, it's an art thing, it's an aesthetic thing, you know, that little plume. And we got your football player, um, uh, let me see, David Porter and uh, Bobby Lawrence. Yeah, Bobby Lawrence oh. came by to visit not too long ago, and they, they saw the piece in progress. And Bobby said, oh yeah, my number was 21. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number that's on there. And uh, of course we have the scholar that's He's part of the Chrysler one. family, and He's I chose from a bunch of photographs, and I said, house. now this is really, look at the ropes around that kid's neck. <laughs> <laughs> that kid must be the smartest one in the whole mess right there. <laughs> And not only that, but had the dang cutest smile that you've ever seen. <laughs> and of course, we got your Diane Sayer uh, Recreational Center there, and they're doing their thing, and the, the high school. Um, I think that just about covers it, doesn't it? And uh, like I say, this is a, this is a kind of a cheerleading process. Oh, one more thing. See the bridge back there? Look at the bridge behind the cotton. There. And, and then the water goes back, and uh, back behind the high school is a slough. And I said, that reminds me of the boat club. And there's a slough down there in the boat club. Is that, that was intentional. Hey, oh, the bell. I don't know the real history behind the bell, but there's a history there. We'll have to give a lecture on that one. But it's very interesting. Okay. Uh, I just want to say finally that I'd like to extend my sincerest thanks to all of you for allowing me to do this and to be part of this. And my best wishes go out to all of you in this community for an extended healthy and prosperous future. Thank you very much.